ordered when they didn't deliver you and this one went out and got it. Yeah, uh, the Bradford County Commission will meet in a workshop session uh, July 5th, 1.30. It's actually 1.55. Uh, the County Administration Building, 200 South Texas Avenue, Suite 106. First item is to call to order. The second is presentation and discussion of the following Brazos County Departments and Offices of the proposed budget request for FY 2022 through 2023. And unless there's somebody that needs to get out of here early, we'll start with Fleet Services. Judge, Commissioner, Fleet Services is requesting the purchase of a AC recovery machine for the light fleet shop. Right now the price shows to be about $7,000, but the way things have been going up, I don't know what it'll be like. But uh, this right here is to basically be able to work on the newer vehicles. They have a new uh, 1234 AC system that's in these trucks and cars and we've kind of we thought the price was kind of high but uh we're just hoping it would have come down we were running on the vehicle's existing warranties just sending them back to the dealers but right now we're getting our vehicles are getting old enough now to where we need to start we're finding out that we're having to sub some of them out because we don't have no way to draw the charge out or put a charge back into them so that's what that is right there. That's the only thing that fleet services has. Do you have any questions about that? Um, do you not have a, a AC recovery? We have one for 134A. That's okay. the older systems. We have this one in each one. shop. But this system right here has probably been out for a couple of years now in the new Tahoes okay. and the newer trucks. We don't have one for you. Okay. That's it. Thank you. I'll be back. I've got some other ones. <laughs> uh, risk management. Hello. Um, okay, so in the last few years, uh, I've been trying to. Um, get the county's buildings up to date on camera systems. Uh, the first year we tackled Road and Bridge, uh, the fleet shop, the big Road and Bridge fleet shop, and uh, the yards out at Road and Bridge. Um, we got really lucky, and IT was actually able to install that themselves. So, uh, but, so we took, the under, took that on. Uh, last year I came to y'all and asked for money for this building for cameras to be put on the outside because we only had indoor cameras. Y'all went ahead and approved that and we're still waiting on on cameras to come in, uh, you know, shipping and all from the economy. Um, so this year I am coming to y'all uh, for uh, another building that the county owns or buildings, I should say, and that is why the price is so hefty um, for the expo expo complex um, the expo complex already has a few outdoor cameras basically on the four corners of the um, outside of the built of the uh, pavilions and building and they all face into the parking lots um, so basically what I would like to see is the county to approve a, a project so that we can get cameras in all the arenas, the pavilions, the indoors, uh, where all the main events and main areas where the public <coughs> is. Um, there are several reasons for this. So the first reason is because of obviously security for the public and the employees. Um, the expo has more people coming in and out of that building than any other county building. Um, thousands. Uh, any given weekend, um, I'm sure Carl can tell you hundreds of thousands of people coming in and out of that place. Um, there are, are constantly things that are happening with people out there, 
uh, I wouldn't say every event somebody gets hurt, but it is a regular occurrence when people are getting hurt out at these events. Um, they're also, I have Jason here. Uh, so speaking of bigger events like the fair, uh, the fair has a ton of people coming in and out. It's one of the biggest events that the expo puts on, as you well know. Um, Jason uh, does some, some work out there. I'll let him talk about that in here in just a second. But basically in the past, IT has been able to temporarily put up cameras just for the fair every single year. That probably can't happen anymore because they're out of spares. Uh, IT has had to use up all their spares over the time. And uh, basically, if, if they're ordering a camera, it's to replace one or it's to for another project. Um, so that's kind of why I have Jason and Trevor here. The other thing, the other reason I'm requesting these cameras out there is because all these events that are coming in and out of the expo, it could, they could have five events out there at one time or three events out there at one time. They might have two or three on the inside and they might have one big event on the outside or multiple events, different, different events renting the facility at the same time. Um, but sometimes when the events are happening, there are occasions, not on purpose obviously, but on occasion, somebody has an accident and they run into the building or they hit a roll-up bay door or the, um, the frame of that roll-up bay door, it's all metal. So anytime that metal gets hit, it's a ding here, a ding there. Um, so my, my vision is to be able to charge those events. We, ha we have them get insurance before they, when they sign up for an event, they have to sign a contract and they, they, they're required to obtain insurance. Um, so far, I have not had any use their insurance. They've just paid for it outright. But uh, I would, it, it would be better for the county to be able to charge those people for those damages that they've accidentally done um, than the county just footing the bill. Um, and I have, I just have a few lists of things to show y'all of kind of what's happened over the last several years. Just to give you an idea of, of different uh, little dings and nicks here and there. Um, but basically it all adds up to a little over $100,000 worth of damages since 2018. Now, most of that, we haven't been able to go back on the event because we don't have proof that they did it. Um, a lot of the ones that we are able to go back on and have in charge, they've, they have come forward and you know contacted Expo staff and have said, um, hey, I accidentally hit, I accidentally dinged this door, we wanna pay for it, you know, and all that. And then that's when Expo contacts me. There are other situations where they don't know who the expo may notice something but they're not sure which event did the damage so in those cases we can't charge those events for that damage because we don't have proof now these cameras would give us that proof and we'd be able to go back and find where the accident actually happened or the incident happened and we can say okay that was for this event it happened on this day at this time this truck or this u-haul or whatever um Jason, do you want to, I know you got Qu Question, Leslie, there Listen. are no cameras inside the uh, expo at this time? There is only one camera in the lobby and it's facing the, the entrance, the double doors. I, I couldn't hear you, Carl. He said that was a camera that got left over from the fair. Thank you. Judge Commissioners, um, just real quick, um, as most of you probably know, I do handle the um, the security and the EMS operation for the fair and rodeo um, to coordinate everything. And one of the things that we set up during the fair and rodeo is a large command post at this facility. And um, and so when we bring the command post in place, IT has always been in the last few years have have. Um, been able to install the temporary cameras that have helped us tremendously 
um, being able to see where the the main crowd gathers for the concerts and the rodeo and stuff of that nature um, but we're starting to uh, again um, we're losing some of those cameras and and I think that that um, when you start thinking about overall security um, for um, during the fair and rodeo um, you really need to think about the the camera system because we only have so many people and when we have the command post set up we have somebody dedicated to view those cameras the whole time they're up and operational and we've identified several uh, medical emergencies using the cameras um, we had a disturbance um, last year during the fair and rodeo which was actually out of sight of that camera that's in the lobby um, we had an assault with injury that took place in, in one of the hallways right there in the front entrance and we weren't able to, to collect anything. We had a hit and run in the parking lot um, last year and we were able to use the exterior cameras to actually identify the vehicle and uh, track it down and, and made some uh, and wrote a report and all that stuff. So we, we utilize the cameras tremendously and they're great for, for um, overall protection of the, of the events that take place and I'm not just concerned with the uh, fair and rodeo but every other event that takes place out there so um, but yeah I, I totally agree with uh, adding some cameras to the facility uh, just to kind of uh, play off of what he just said uh, the fair and rodeo is the biggest event but it's not doesn't mean it will always be the biggest event out there uh, it's my understanding and Carl can confirm this or not uh, but that they have they are booked every day at the expo all year long except for maybe a few days a year um and like i said the amount of people coming in and out of there alone um is should be i think should be enough for the camera system based on how things are going around the rest of the world um we there's all kinds of things going on people are people are not like they used to be uh, and sometimes do things that they shouldn't do and I th I think this camera system could help law enforcement it could help the fair it could help risk and HR for investigations and stuff like that so do y'all have any questions will, will it be monitored or is it just a recording for historical data if we have a problem so uh, for bigger events like the fair it would be monitored uh, but for for every day it's not monitored it's just too many we have so many cameras in the county um, but it, it's recorded and then uh, it's I believe at the expo we keep camera footage for a month now for 30 days um, once that 30 days drops off it's gone so yes So he makes a, a great point. Some of the shows they have out there are prized bulls, prized horses, uh, high dollar animals that they have out there. Uh, and if something happens to one of them, their owners are gonna wanna know what happened, how it happened, and, and that kind of thing. So uh, that's a good point, Carl, thank you. Nina, you had a question? He answered it. I was wondering to know how long we're gonna keep the, oh. the we, it used to be two weeks. We did extend that because there was an incident with the overhang. We, we believe an event came in with a 18 wheeler and then drove out of the South arena and took part of the overhang. They bent it outwards with their big rig. That's what we think happened, but we don't have proof because there's no cameras out there. Um, and that's part of that $44,000 worth of stuff that we're trying to get. So that 44,000 on that list is just our initial quote we're still waiting for more because uh, the low bidder that we ended up getting a PO for no longer is in business. So we're starting over. <laughs> so yep. is there any way to phase this over several years? Phasing. Um, we could look at phasing it. It's every building is its own sort of miniature system. Um, so if someone were to set a priority for that, we could we could look at facing the buildings as we went along. Thank you. So 
Where are we at right now on hotel occupancy tax funds? Uh, do, we, do we have enough available there to potentially? We have enough available regarding on what projects you're wanting to do. So, okay. so there potentially we've got other projects there. There are, uh, after Expo, there are a couple of projects that would be considered under hot funds. Uh, but looking at some of the projects, the costs are pretty big, and so we would have to prioritize on what would be best for hot wood. We could take out a general fund. Um, okay. But yes, I kind of estimated what I've thought for the past couple of years for expenditures for projects for the hot. Uh, it just depends on what you all like to do. Okay. Yeah, just, just for a matter of information, um, <coughs> what is our hot balance currently, and what's our uh, what's what's what would we what's the annual like revenue on there? Just kind of a good average. For FY21, the revenue that was brought in was $2.2 million. But I want you all to keep in mind, last couple of years due to COVID, we have not transferred debt from the HOT over to the general fund, so that's going to be our priority right. yeah, to the debt service. That will be the priority right. for this next coming year. Okay. But that was the annual revenue, you said? That was the annual revenue. Annual revenue. Okay. And I guess what I'm looking for is a balance and then a uh, Expenditure. unrestricted balance. Um, because I know that we've still got some commitments for debt service that we can use hot for. And I know that we've got some um, <coughs> continuing payments to entities who we had a incentive for them to have an event here, like 4-H, I think, was one of the ones. Uh, one point, well, at the end of 2021, it was 3.1 for fund balance. For the estimates for this year, I have not entered to see what we're going to look like, but okay. I did budget a good hefty amount for capital outlay just to see what it's going to look like. And for the revenues, I have not looked at that either. I think we, I estimated it. A reserve is 1.9. 1.9. And that's up to 3.1. If I could give you a better number. Yeah, just, just one the ballpark. And this is with the updated personnel expenditures. The only thing that's missing is if there's any other changes from today on. Okay. Thanks. Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, and for debt, we are transferring, we're, we're budgeting to transfer 1.5. We're proposing to transfer 1.5 from hot to debt. Okay. For the next couple of years, at least, to get Just caught get up. Two years, <coughs> and so they were about a million apiece. Okay. So we're about two million behind. So we're kind of trying to catch it up, spread it over the next few years to make sure that the time, by the time we finish paying off the debt incurred for Expo buildings, the hot fund has paid that debt. Gotcha. And that was two <coughs> million per year. Uh, one word. 1.5 in 22-23, probably drop down to about 1, 1.1 in 23-24, and it'll okay. keep going down. But that's built on a schedule that will keep us up with. So that we all, end, yeah, it ends up being zero at the end. We're retired. Good. Yeah, because I know part of that's uh, non-hot debt, and part of it's cash. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Human resources. I'm back. 
<laughs> this is a much you. smaller request, though, so don't worry. <laughs> um, our request is actually for replacement of HR's combo copy back scanner machine with a color combo machine um, with the added bonus of being able to let both risk and HR utilize the color functionality. Um, in addition, if the court would allow, we could transfer the black and white color combo, not sorry, the black and white combo copier to risk for their everyday printing. And then whenever they need to print color, they could print it in HR since we always have someone there Monday through Friday eight to five. So that's our quest. Basically, I was going to request one, and then <laughs> she was also going to request one, and so maybe it'd be more appetizing if we shared. Um, that right. way, I mean, we're printing flyers, reports, training documents, recruiting documents, benefit brochures. Postcards, mail outs, uh, investigation photos, which we alluded to with the cameras. Mm -hmm. um, and using a color copy machine is at least half the cost than using our current printers right now. Per image. Per image. Yes, yeah. per image. So, any questions? No. Thank you. Are outsourced printers? Do you want to? So, uh, risk would be getting rid of at least one printer uh, if we could do, you know, move around the black and white to us and then the color to them. We could get rid of uh, a printer out of our office. It would be one less piece of equipment. Uh, less toner, uh, that kind of thing. Do you want to address the contract? Um, so uh, we we haven't like looked at pricing for outsourcing these print jobs, but uh, typically you're going to pay a little bit more on the, you know, just contract because either. they're paying their employees to do it and that kind of thing. And timing is um, issue. Timing is an issue, uh, especially when we have to get something out fast. Uh, it's hard to wait on a printer to get back to us. It's not always right. And then you gotta, so it seems to be faster to just have um, employees do it. to do it in house. Um, we did actually in HR have um, an experience within the last two weeks where we sent something off to be printed and it came back incorrect. So we had to get it reissued to it again. So I mean, it happened. Any questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Exposition center. Judge, commissioners, you're probably going to throw rocks at me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what I've got on here first is uh, a mule, Kawasaki mule that we're going to replace. Uh, transmission's gone out on one, and, and so we've got on there to replace that one. Uh, we've got a forklift we've been trying to get for this past year that was on for last year, and it's uh, uh, it's pushed it to this next year. Right, right, Kim. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then the big deal that we have is the driveway repair out there at the expo. And I had, had this on there partially last year because I had one section behind the west barn that was really deteriorating. We've tried to fix it. Uh, Road and Bridge has fixed it for us. We've had an outside person come fix it. It's just when those big trucks and trailers turn on the asphalt and make sharp turns, it just deteriorates. And so I, uh, last year I had on there, we were going to cut out like about a 50 by 250 spot and replace it with concrete. So I got talking to, to uh, Fred and uh, actually the front where we come, when we drive into the expo, the very main entrance to the front is partially uh, asphalt there too. So there's really seven spots on here uh, is, is what that cost is for. And, you know, I, I, I think we could do it in a couple of years if we needed to if we needed to you know but but that that part behind the west barn and then the entrance the main entrance are the two the two worst places uh that we just have potholes and and you know it, it needs to be concrete that's the only way we can do it we have concrete going down the west side of the south arena so we'll tie into that 
and then we'll have all concrete back there and we won't have that problem anymore. Uh, the other thing is uh, we, we're, we're kind of, as you see, we're kind of in a fix-up mode out there. Uh, I've got, got some bids for repainting all the block wall. We've got a ton of block wall outside, that cinder block wall that's painted gray. And, it's, and all of our restroom lobbies are, have red doors and, and they're all uh, block wall, cylinder block wall. Uh, so we've got we've got some bids to, to repaint all of that stuff, make it look look a lot better. Uh, that's all I have. Anybody have any questions? Carl, this may be a question for Road and Bridge, but you were just, uh, discussing that you might could wait two years on the driveway driveway repair. Mm -hmm. What would the advantage of that be on our costs going up? Oh, I'm just saying time. do it in stages, you know, the to the two worst spots this coming year. And if we have to, we could do the ones on the side because they're literally not as bad as, as, as those two spots are. So you're saying there's seven spots altogether? Yes, ma'am. Fred, what, what do you see concrete prices doing over a two-year period going up, up, up? With inflation, I almost think we need to consider doing it now. I've got it. Yeah, yeah. It, it's exactly where people are turning with, with large vehicles yeah, and everything is right. So, yeah. <clears throat> By, by repairing that now, would it possibly lengthen the lot, the, the <coughs> asphalt sections adjacent to it? Or? Yeah, it should. Yeah. It yeah. should yeah. because this past year we this went back and we put good. gravel on because we were having yeah. you know slipping, tripping hazards yeah, out, the out there, and we went back and we put rock, overlaid it with rock. Yes, and that's been it's been a blessing. We yeah. had how, how, how old are the driveways spots. out yeah. there? Well, they're 15 years old. 15 years. Yep. This I mean, we, and road and bridges helped us out through the years when we get potholes trying to fix them. But and we actually fixed they fixed the entrance one time. Uh, but just the but asphalt just won't hold up. You know, especially hot days like today, and you get a think so. huge rig come in there just just eats it up. So. I think that's what you said. Where you change surfaces is where you have the problems, whether you're accelerating or. Uh, decelerating. Yeah. I mean, that's that it's asphalt just, just pushes on up on yeah, the Yeah, especially when you're turning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Any questions? Um, I have one. Paul Carl's up there. Okay. I like to uh, kind of piggyback off the security system that uh, Risk uh, presented. There's one other item that is kind of pushed back to 24 that I'd like Trevor to kind of go into a little bit more detail regarding the expo. It's the one that's highlighted purple. It's not on y'all's list because it was uh, requested for 24, but we might could do this as a package deal. Um, ballroom ex uh, exhibit hall video, digital sh uh, signage and streaming upgrade. Uh, this is something that needs to be upgraded as well and due to cost as we prolong it a little longer, it's probably double in price as well. Uh, Trevor, do you mind kind of it's really a some, It's really some addition to that streaming video. Now, if anybody wants to stream anything out there at the Expo, they have to get an outside vendor to come and do that. So Whichever that's something we could there. gain some cost back from if we, you know, if, Make if, it we provide, if we provide that to them, then they can receive some revenue from that. Go ahead, Trevor. Yeah. So we've, I mean, y'all all know over the years we've been upgrading, replacing AV systems throughout the expo. This would, fingers crossed, would be the last last big one that we do out there, and we will have upgraded every piece of, of the AV across the entire complex. Um, the issue we're seeing, and we're going to have to do it this year, we're going to, we, we budgeted and you guys approved a project for this fiscal year that we're having to roll. That's just the nature of the beast right now with getting parts. It's a supply chain issue. And I'm afraid if we do the same thing here, we're not really waiting a year. We're waiting two years, essentially. And, you know, encumbered funds versus spent funds is one thing. But even if we commit and let's say, yeah, let's go ahead and do it, you know, we cut a PO in November of, of this year. 
we're likely still not going to see that hardware. We're going to have to roll it again to, by 24. I don't know at some point if the supply chain is going to catch up, but that's just where we're at. Um, so like Nina said, cost would go up most likely also. Um, we're seeing kind of across the board 10%, you know, every six or eight months or so from all of our vendors and uh, manufacturers. And from a time perspective, it, it does make sense. So any questions on that piece? And that project to me would be considered useful under hot funds. We could use hot funds for that. Uh, for that and for, you know, the driver repair. Uh, something to think about as well. So I want to add this with y'all's permission to the party list. Uh, for next year, just to kind of see how it plays out. There's um, another project out at the expo. <laughs> Were you all done with that one? Yeah. <laughs> um, with regard to software, Ungerbach. It has. It's. We've included it in the hot fund budget, but we wanted. We thought this might be a good opportunity. If you have any questions about it, Trevor knows the most about it. Uh -huh. okay. So um, currently the expo uses a piece of software called Ungerbach to do their scheduling. Um, uh, we bought into that 2013, I believe. Um, it, w I, initially when they went that direction, it was, it was <coughs> one product and that product has sort of morphed into a newer, better version of that same product. Mm -hmm. um, the expo has kind of lived in the very entry level piece of what that software can do. Um, they can schedule events, um, but there are still a lot of business processes that they do on a day to day <coughs> basis that they have to jump around four or five different pieces of software to do. Um, by biting off a bigger subscription to the software, they'll be able to sort of one stop shop a lot of a lot of their event processes um, from a uh, onboarding um, tracking there, there's just a ton of features to it, even from a management side, that they can kind of get a good overview of, well, whose tasks, what are people's tasks on which events, and, and get a good status of where an event might be and do a, do a check against um, the process and, the, and the, just the streamlining of all of that into, into one place. Um, it is a big jump in cost, but they were, they were grandfathered in because they were an early adopter when, they, when the company started. And so this kind of gets us out of that that grandfather price into a more standard standard subscription model. And yeah, we can use hot tax for this. So, uh, it's the for the yeah. so we should be able to. Yeah. This also I, I did forget to mention this also does allow the the fair um, to to utilize that software if they do so choose. It comes with a bundle of twenty licenses, which would handle all of the expo staff plus the fair staff also. We used to have those licenses the individually. individually. Yeah. That makes sense. Road and bridge. Good afternoon, commissioners, judge. Um, so the first thing we are asking for this year is the new road and bridge building. Um, I hope I really hope we get it this year uh, because uh, I think me and Fred were talking about it. There was a 2005 needs assessment done for what uh, the road and bridge building needed to be in 2015. And it's been seven years since 2015. And uh, we are still at the same location we were 40 years ago, I guess. I don't know how many years, clearly before my time, uh, on this planet, I guess. But uh, <laughs> um, uh, everybody's saying the same thing to you, uh, and I, I, I'm going to repeat the same thing, but I think it cannot be said enough. Every year that we wait 
in funding a particular project that has been hanging around for seven, eight, ten years due, uh, like roads, uh, our building is just going to keep getting more expensive. And it is not a problem that we can um, do away with. Uh, it won't go away. Uh, it is a problem. It is going to remain that. It's going to get worse. Uh, the amount of money that the court decides to uh, keep putting in, repairing here and there, doing minor band-aid projects, it is just going to get more and more expensive doing that uh, over the period of, <coughs> you know, in the future. So I cannot mm -hmm. stress enough how much our department needs uh, this uh, project. Uh, we support the entire community. We try to, uh, you know, do our best. But if we do not have proper support infrastructure for us to do basic tasks uh, or even a humane uh, working environment, uh, then it just becomes difficult for us to perform at the level that is expected uh, from all of us. Um, uh, so um, the price that you see here, um, you know, Fred can uh, elaborate on that, uh, how we got around actually getting that price. Uh, again, that's a price that is uh, as of kind of sort of today, uh, what it will be uh, when our new budget year starts, we don't know, might be more expensive, but uh, we are at least in the process right now of, uh, you know, uh, getting an architect and getting a scope and all of that. And thank you to the court for, you know, agreeing uh, to fund that project. So we are doing that pro part of the process. So it's not like we are not doing anything right now and we're using this time to get the project, you know, ahead and uh, rolling uh, as we speak. So uh, we are on the right path, but we need support to make sure that this it's a fruition you know, ultimately what we decide and do this year, it uh, cul culminates into something uh, in the next year, hopefully. Um, the second project is a piggyback on our first project. As you all know, uh, Fleet houses uh, themselves with us. And uh, um, if there is something that will be done for the Rodham Bridge building, there needs to be some remediation for the current building we are in. It cannot be uh, used just as is, uh, it just is in a very dire need. Uh, I know many of you have come over and you know, you know seen the state the building is in. Um, uh, so I mean, we have shown you pictures. We can, we'll be happy to show you latest pictures if you want to see where the building is right now. Uh, it, it just, uh, you know, the pictures speak for themselves. Uh, we don't really have to do much shopping, t talking when we actually show you what's out there. So. Uh, that kind of is a piggyback project on our uh, Rodham Bridge office building project. And uh, the third one is a uh, Rodham Bridge shed. Um, I had asked for this building uh, or the shed project last year. Uh, and to surprise, uh, it's uh, double the price. It was $170,000, at least the quote that we had last time. Uh, it's 322 uh, today. Uh, one, we actually uh, have the building in uh, place. I don't know how much that is going to be. Uh, like I said, it cannot be stressed enough that everything is going to get expensive. Um, so delaying these projects doesn't really mean the, pro the problems really don't go away. Uh, some of these have been lingering around for many, many years. And uh, you know, we'll come, we'll do our due diligence. We come back, we'll ask you again every year. Uh, but we hope that you see, you know, the actual need. And if you want to actually have uh, Fred, uh, he can talk to you about each of these prices and anything if you have any questions on the particulars of these, uh, you know, projects. But other than that, I think uh, Ken will uh, talk to you about all our equipment needs for uh, Road and Bridge. Wasn't, wasn't and the 4.1 for Road and Bridge building in the previous budget for this year? Yes. We, okay. It that's was. What, that's and the that one that we took away from. Yeah, you. yeah, and that got reallocated for. With the promise that we would do it again this year, that we'd get it back in there. Well, thank you for saying that. <laughs> yeah. uh, yes, uh, but yeah, that got reallocated for different things. Uh, it kind of actually worked out 
nicely because <coughs> right now we are like i said we are in a needs assessment uh, process and that process typically takes uh, around the time that we are taking right now so uh, it would have uh, probably even if we would have it uh, i don't think we would have had real construction begin this year uh, at the rate at which we you know uh, the process takes to hire an archi architect and go through the process with them so um, yeah i hope that you consider to fund it basically for next year uh, as you did last year so. yeah i think what we saw we were talking about a building comparable to the uh, what we did at Ag Extension, yeah, and if I remember that correctly, that was under three million dollars um, <coughs> at the time. At the time we looked at that, so now it's up to four point one. Huh? Sure. Um, so, and part of this, of course, to preface this, like Berthana said, we're we're going through the evaluation process to get an architect on board to do kind of a, a planning and get us a, a program of requirements for both those two projects in kind of in conjunction so look at where our needs are what we're looking at for the future and then also um, doing some things for Ken to be happy have some more storage and and moving him downstairs as well him and Amber but um, that that's more than just the building so it also includes um, just real quick it includes redoing part the parking lot if we were to move if we were to move to where the old ag building is that parking lots pretty much disintegrated we've uh, picked up the areas that have uh, just fell in and filled it in with rock for now bull rock if you will <laughs> but um, uh, so it includes it includes uh, the parking lot it includes um, IT equipment it includes HVAC um, it includes uh, one thing that's come to light now is I guess that old building is kind of a hub for some reason for the electrical circuitry that's feeding the fuel station that's feeding the waste station so everything comes out of the existing road and bridge building into that old ex ag building and then comes out and feeds um, the garden areas um, the fuel station it, it's just kind of strange the way that happened so it is going to we are going to need new lines in from btu as well with the transformer and reconfigure things so it includes it includes those things as well um and furnishing and possibly uh, a water line that the city was on us for apparently when we did the fuel station that didn't get in included so landscaping is going to be uh uh, lesser because we'll be able to count a lot of the trees that are existing out there with the gardens as well so. any other I have one um, I guess looking towards the plans are we still gonna uh, house all the road and bridge meetings at the shop where it's located now or is there a plan to continue to add it to the new building the meetings uh, um, like any meetings with your road and bridge shop right. people that's still gonna be housed at the shop shop well that's gonna be part of the n kind of the needs analysis so um, it could be that we meet in an outdoor space under an awning at the new building um, part of the also uh, what our thought would be is we'd have a, a covered walkway between the two um, but there again we'll wait to see what the consultants come up with the best use what we have and the spaces that we have to uh, get the best bang for our buck. Okay. Anything else? Okay. All right. I just want to say one thing, uh, not about all of this, uh, but about our roads. I know it's not on this, and you know we have uh, worked with the budget officer and. Uh, decided that you know what what we have asked uh, is what we have uh, you know proposed uh, but I want you to understand that that's not what we need we have asked for that but that's not what we need and uh, you know all of this is fine but every year that we do not get what we need that five-year list that we all talk about all the time uh, again we understand that it's a fluid list and you know it keeps changing that five-year list is not a five-year list. That five-year list is essentially a 10-year or even longer list. 
because every year we do not get what we need, you are looking at doubling the time on what each of those projects can be, uh, you know, got to, to be done. Uh, so uh, I just wanted you to know that, you know, uh, we have been pretty thankful for what we get, but it's not what we need. We need way more than that. And I hope you understand that if you have avenues where uh, Road and Bridge can get more funding, uh, please do consider talking to myself or Fred, and we would be happy to assist and let you know on uh, details on what we actually need in a year uh, than what uh, you know we are going to get. If I so. remember correctly, that's about $250 million was the total of the 200 It's uh, about, so, well, uh, from what we had the uh, estimate before, all of this inflation and all of that hit was about $100 million, uh, but that is not what it is today because every project that we get it's a uh, bid at way higher than what we thought uh, it would be. So, uh, you know. Uh, so so that, that total of the five-year list that you prepared for us and updated, that was $100 million, uh, In the past. Not $250 million. Yeah, in the past, right. yes, it was $100 million, But that's not what the number is right. as of today. Right. Uh, because uh, on I if the uh, proposed budget gets uh, adopted, what we can do in what uh, we are, you know, uh, asking for is going to be very little. Uh, I just hope you understand that it might be just one project or, you know, uh, a lit we'll try to split another project or something like that. We try to come up with innovative ways of splitting projects and whatnot, but it's not going to be much. Right. And I hope you understand that. Uh, you know, that's all I had to say on roads. Thank you. I didn't ruin it. Yeah? I didn't ruin it. I'd like to add to uh, what Prothena was saying on line item three, I think it is, the shed. Me and, me and, me and Gary Arnold did talk way back. I wasn't going to ask for an equipment shed because he was going to. It was going to be on the same piece of property. But we spent about $150,000 worth of deductibles on hail damaged vehicles in the last couple of years. And I, we kind of worked it out where we'd share that shed. I'd put some of our new vehicles, if we had them out there, up underneath that thing. So it would help us both. And it didn't pay for me to ask for the same shed if we were all going to be working in the same area. Some of those items could be pulled out and we could put the newer stuff in there. I know Leslie kind of likes that idea. <laughs> I'm going to go over uh, some of the equipment. <clears throat> At line item, well, it's unit 690. That's a six yard dump truck that I had as a priority one. That's just to kind of cycle it out. It has almost a almost 200,000 miles on it. But uh, one of the reasons I wanted to replace this truck, not only just because it's getting tired, uh, I had one of, I had loaned a six yard dump truck to the expo and it was basically transferred out of a, it was an old road and bridge truck. And I, it died last year and they used those trucks <coughs> to move dirt in and out of the arena. So by replacing this truck, what I was going to do is transfer them another one of these because they can basically die on his yard. If it runs until it quits, it doesn't matter. We'll just pull it out of there. But I had that to be replaced as a uh, priority one and was hoping we could get that this year. And then the, uh, the water truck was a priority two and I had Nina move it up to a priority one because uh, Road and Bridge got with me last week and was telling me that they can't get water trucks. I know, Judge, we had talked in the past about how we'd rent these water trucks. It was a bit, little easier, better trucks, and uh, worked a lot better for us. But they're having problems renting trucks right now. They don't even have them. So they're needing a truck right now really bad because they have all these projects running and they don't have enough trucks to wet the you know to process the road and I started looking to see if I could find one of these trucks I did find one I 
they told me it'd be impossible, but a uh, Freightliner called me and said they had one, but I couldn't come up with numbers. So I'm, I'm kind of asking for a, an immediate purchase, if we can, for that water truck, just so I could get these guys rolling. All of our trucks are old and tired. The tanks are rusting out of them. They stop up all of the nozzles. So we're fighting everything we have, and most of our trucks are all 20 years old. The tanks, I got one of them that has a stainless steel tank, and I'm working right now to try to do some plumbing on it to try to get it up. But if we could find a way to pick up this water truck while I've got it located, Chances, if it gets away from us, we may not see it. I'm having the hardest time buying vehicles right now. It almost, well, I think we had six trucks last year that was slated to be built in May, and they canceled the orders. They